Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is September the 2nd. 2020 strong hand long-term thinking buying over crying personal responsibility is a new counterculture buy and hold that bitcoin baby one bitcoin equals one bitcoin do not fomo on alts do not fomo on DeFi. we're going to talk about that today i am offended by selling hello my elite friends defiance over compliance remember that if you have questions i have answers type in the uh, super chat uh, bitcoin meister uh, or do a super chat, you, you know the whole thing, and catch my attention. There actually was a question before the show. We're going to answer that during the show. Uh, hello, elite friends. Hello, indeed, my elite friends. Okay, now, uh, a reminder, tomorrow, 9.30, 9.15 a.m. in the morning, Baltimore time, Ty Zen will be on the show. It's going to be the Ask Me Anything. You can ask me anything. You can ask Ty anything. I'll ask Ty questions. It'll be just like last Thursday when we had Gabriel from Venezuela on. So that's a new feature we're trying out. When a guest comes on, we haven't asked me anything. So bring your question. He will answer anything. Uh, and he's had quite a life too, Ty Zen. So that will be Thursday, tomorrow in the morning, 9.15 in the morning, uh, Baltimore time. Now, Friday, 2 p.m. is this week in Bitcoin this week. Okay, so we got that set. All of it's linked to below. Follow me on Twitter at TechBall, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. -E I've been tweeting like, retweeting like a madman today, okay? Adam Carolla, we share the same first name. There, there's a dude who's not scared. There's a guy who doesn't care about fitting in. Pound that like button. Hey, you don't know what I'm talking about? Check out uh, my feed, okay? You should have been following all day. Now, uh, let, let's. Uh, it's a sell the news type of day. If you're if you're one of those fiat freaks, you're like, what the heck happened? All of a sudden, the price just went down. It'll be back. We're one day closer to an all time high. Okay, don't get don't get freaked out, you fiat freak. But we're reminded it's not a bull market without occasional fud to remove weak hands and create discounted limited edition price for Bitcoin. So that's linked to below. But what was the fud? What was the fud that was a bit thumb fud? And you're saying, well, what the heck's bit thumb? Well, you probably were not around in 2017, were you? Bitthumb, the largest uh, exchange in South Korea. Uh, South Korea FUD. We haven't had that for a while either. We haven't heard much from South Korea lately. It's all cyclical. We're hearing from South Korea again, and we're getting some exchange FUD. Because back, really back in the day, when something bad would happen to an exchange, people would sell the news, like major, and Bitcoin would go down. People would say Bitcoin uh, is go. It, it was it was Bitcoin that had the problem, not the exchange. So what what happened with this exchange? Uh, it it's that time of the year again. Exchange FUD. Police reportedly seized South Korea's largest crypto exchange, Bitthumb. Whoa! They seized the exchange. That doesn't sound very good, does it? South Korean authorities have reportedly seized Bitthumb, one of the country's biggest cryptocurrency exchanges, by trading volume. And uh, yeah, what what were they doing over there that they got seized by? And this is a modern Western country. Uh, well, I mean, it's a mo Western in the sense it's not in the West, but you know what I mean. It's it's a first world country. I've been there. I actually met with the at an exchange, not that exchange, but another exchange. So, uh, and they were big into Bitcoin back in 2017. We we haven't talked, but today is one of those down days. So. Uh, if, if the police, if the government really seizes and closes down this exchange, that's not good. Um, and does that mean Bitcoin's dead? No, of course not. There's nothing to do. I mean, but the news, it's going to get out there. Okay. The news is already getting out there. So let's see uh, why BitThumb got in trouble. They've had controversies in the pop in the past, but just so you know, on the way up, on the way up during a bull market, there, there are stories like this, okay, that bring a, you know, it's a roller coaster. It's a bumpy freaking ride to that return to the all-time high, one day closer to an all-time high. It's a bumpy ride. This is one of the bumps in the road, so I I 
we'll see how long this story goes on or maybe it'll be forgotten soon. I can't tell you the future, but I can tell you, if you look at that chart from today, it was right around the time they released the story. Some people were selling the news because all the speculators know that there's a lot of people that freak out when a major exchange goes down or the government confiscates and it takes over an exchange, whatever, whatever happens. All right. So pound that like button, positive spin, positive spin people. Now, we're going to talk about DeFi because, yeah, Taval Dakra said China FUD soon. Yeah, we have a, <laughs> if we're having an exchange FUD, we, we might as well have a, we might as well go back to a China FUD. Remember, retweet this, dudes. Re, this is out on Tech Vault. Retweet it. I just sent it out to you guys to, uh, to retweet it. Always great to support the show with free. You can support the show free by just spreading it over, over social media like the great well, not the great Twitter, but like Twitter, my account's great. You can use Twitter for great things. T E C H B A L T. Next story has to do with uh, DeFi. Okay, and a lot of this show has to do with DeFi today. Decentralized bridges. That that's a new term out there, and what a term it is! I think this buzzword is going to help Ethereum quite some, quite a lot. $500 million worth of – this is from Masari Crypto, a reputable source of information. $500 million worth of Bitcoin has been ported over to Ethereum in 2020. With only 0.3% of all Bitcoin on Ethereum and DeFi booming, the opportunity for decentralized bridges between the two chains, chains is hard to ignore. So – what, what's what's de, what's a decentralized bridge when you boil? It's not decentralized, first of all. But this buzzword describes the connection, the intertwining of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's what I'm sure a lot of people in Ethereum want. They want there to be as close a connection between the two as possible. If you can just go back and forth between the two easily and 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 it's decentralized, even though it's not decentralized. Well, man, that means Ethereum is just as good as Bitcoin. It, it must be better than Bitcoin because it can do so much more than Bitcoin. And yet now we have these decentralized uh, decentralized bridges between the two. So I, I'm just putting it out there right now. That is going to be a buzzword that's going to be used a lot. And the people who believe it and the people who hype it, it's a pretty darn good way to market the legitimacy of Ethereum, okay? That hey, look at look at it now. It, it can it's the world computer. It can do all this stuff, and there are these decentralized bridges between the two that will enable decentralized finance on Ethereum. Just you can tokenize your Bitcoin. All oh, this this uh, rat bit again. The rat Bitcoin is just an IOU. Why people want to do this? Hey, it's their own personal business. I am not recommending it at all. But it's a Decentralized bridges. I, it, from a marketing perspective, I like it. It's, it's a successful marketing term right there. Decentralized bridges. You heard it here first. Get used to hearing it more and more and people thinking it's more and more of a positive that people are trading in their Bitcoin for IOUs that are on Ethereum. That is not a positive for me. I'm offended by selling. I'm offended by turning my Bitcoin into uh, into IOUs, and I'm offended by <laughs> decentralized bridges, <laughs> people who want to use the decentralized bridges. But hey, this is what the big boys play. So what's the matter? What I'm offended by, okay? They're going to do what they're going to do. Gamblers are going to do what they're – and they are definitely doing it, and they are definitely talking about it. Even Pump, Pump, who is a huge Bitcoin dude – Says a lot of great things about Bitcoin. How DeFi is eating traditional finance. Now, this gives me an opportunity to say that if if this decentralized finance experiment, even though it's not very decentralized most of the time, um, if it creates something that revolution that, that brings more people uh, into easy access to gives more people easy access to financial instruments that traditional finance would not, I think it's great. If it comes up with new products, new ideas that could never be um, done in 
traditional finance, I think it's great. And I, it, there could be aspects of this DeFi thing that go on, you know, for the rest of the decade, the decade for decades to come. And maybe, um, you know, the whole traditional finance world will be upended by it. Okay. I mean, Bitcoin is, is already doing that for the, for the 20 percenters who have already founded it, found Bitcoin. So I, I, again, this is a golden age. So they're welcome to experiment over there and build. And I, I, I want, I want people to build in the decentralized land, but you, in, in the DeFi land, which isn't really DeFi, but here, here's the thing that so many people are going to call what they're doing DeFi just so you buy it. Okay. It, there are going to be so many scams and tricks out there. And because this is a big experiment, there are going to be some people with great intentions also building products and they're going to fail. And so I think there's, there's a lot of people that are getting really pumped and, you know, what, what could this contribute to mankind? I got to get in early on every single thing that deals with DeFi. There's going to be a lot of losers in this, a lot. And there's no, there's no guarantee that it's going to revolutionize anything. But for me, I hope they, they do a great they do a great job. And you can read Pomp's thing, it's linked to below. Eating DeFi is eating traditional finance so early. It's it's already eating DeFi. I mean, most people in traditional finance don't know about it. It, it. it seems like it seems like there's a lot of good things that that it could do. Okay. It seems like it. Let's let's see what happens. But let, I mean, we, we're also gonna have to deal with the times when some of these so-called decentralized bridges end up not being very decentralized and some centralized figure takes all of the uh, Bitcoin that was uh, supposedly going over the bridge and steals it all. It's, it's, it's out there and it will happen. And, you know, we're talking about BitThumb. Just a warning to everyone, you know, BitThumb being confiscated by being shut down by the uh, Korean authorities is not, I can, I can imagine worse. Uh, I, I can imagine an, an American exchange or some American con- company of the future that's supposedly decentralized being hacked, and that that's worse, and that will be bad. Okay, that that will uh, that will cause panic because most of the people, I mean, people love to sell the news. People love to sell the news, and those dudes love to blow it all out of proportion. We're living in an era of fear in the mainstream world, and it seeps into our Bitcoin world too, and. People try to scare you out of your Bitcoin. When there's a big news story, people try to blow it out of proportion. So it will happen. There is You will learn what decentralized really means, that this DeFi stuff is not – it is centralized, and that these exchanges that are supposedly so safe, we, we're still, we still haven't seen the worst exchange uh, hack of all time yet. We still haven't, and we, we've seen some interesting ones over the years. So just a, just a reminder, so – Vinny Lingham, <laughs> you're going to love this one. Every crypt, this, this is a tweet from him. Every crypto wallet will need to become a DeFi wallet within 24 months or risk becoming a cold storage wallet. Uh, what he's talking about is all these various online wallets that are usually associated with some company or some trading uh, mechanism or, or some uh, exchange. Everyone, if they want to stay relevant with the gamblers, okay, they're going to have to make DeFi easy on their sites. All right, he's he's got a point there. He, he's he, he's got a point there, but uh, I mean, doesn't mean that you should get into it. Uh, it. It's 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 going to be so. It's going to be big though. It is. It's definitely going to be big, and I, I definitely. Definitely get his point right there that you're going to be able – with all the uh, so-called benefits of DeFi, you're going to have to be able to do through all of these uh, websites. And, and obviously, the wallets uh, will give you the access. So uh, someone says Binance and Sushi crashed the market, not BitThumb. I, I don't know. You know, it's – it's. Uh, I mean, you look at the you look at the time. You look at the time that it happened. You know, I, I, I'll tell you this. Uh Whale Panda doesn't agree with what you said. I agree with what Whale Panda said. I I linked to the uh, I linked to the reference below. You 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 actually called me a name, and uh, that so that that's your your theory is based on a name. Mine is you know linked to a reference, an actual link. So, all right. So pound that like button now. 
what do we got here? Cass eight said, but if you're, I mean, if you're a free, a freak, you care about it. it. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but people do sell the news and whatever news you're referring to, people sell that too. It's just, that's why you don't, you can't worry about news. I mean, that, that's the overarching lesson that I, I teach here is that you just got to have a strong hand. There's going to be flavors of the month, flavors of the year, panics of the month, panics of the year. It comes and go. It's, it's all cyclical. And, you know, whatever, whatever happened at Binance, um, you know, it's, it's happened plenty of times. People uh, go crazy over Binance. Uh, what's for dinner, brother, says uh, Tabal Dakres. Well, that's a beyond Bitcoin type of question, isn't it? Uh, just again, chicken. I have chicken thighs. I like chicken thighs. And I cannot lie. <laughs> you get that reference? The thigh. OK, anyway. Uh, all right. What do we have here? So yeah, what else? Oh, some meat and an avocado. This this will be mine. This will be mine. Okay, now, what do we have? What's the next one? The next story is, let me go back to that. Cass8 actually had a question, and he said, Oh, no, no. Well, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to DeFi in a second. Surely there must be a way to make Bitcoin holders benefit from DeFi mania. And I said, yes. When some random dude comes up with Bitcoin DeFi, a crypto dividend of, of Bitcoin, then yeah, we, we'll benefit. Because I, I have no doubt that someone will come up with some fork of, of Bitcoin or, or an airdrop and just capitalize on that DeFi buzzword. And people go, oh, this is, this is a great one. Better get this one because it says DeFi in the name and we'll benefit because we won't have to, we'll be, we'll be giving it free. Uh, so that, that's how we, uh, that's how we benefit. The Bitcoin holders benefit from uh, DeFi by some, uh, somebody out there. And I don't care if they do it. If anyone's welcome to create any ridiculous coin that they want to create. When someone comes up with a DeFi Bitcoin and gives it all, to all of us for free that, that, and we turn it into Bitcoin, then, then we will definitely benefit. So here's a funny DeFi uh, related uh, tweet. I keep seeing the same stupid DeFi map published on Twitter. So I made some edits to it to help provide clarity. And I think a lot of you have seen it. It's a pretty complicated, uh, colorful map with all of these companies that suppose and, and entities that supposedly have something to do with DeFi. And it gives them nice, fancy labels. Well, it's linked to below. It's from who is this guy? Free Lyish, you, you got it. It's hilarious because it renames all the categories that all the DeFi companies are in, and it's 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 quite entertaining, and it's a it's kind of an honest take on, on some of the uh, some of the uh, aspects of DeFi. Andy Hoffman and I were uh, having a DM earlier, and I liked something that he told me: the new normal is a world where rationality no longer holds water. Yes, for eighty percenters. The uh, the world the rationality no longer holds water. There, there's a lack of rationality, and I've said it before. Most people are irrational most of the time, but it's it's becoming a lot more obvious uh, lately. But the funny thing is, though, in Bitcoin, here in Bitcoin, in the Bitcoin overlay, if you choose to be in the Bitcoin overlay, then you are in a land of rationality. You take yourself away from that crazy eighty percent of world. So it's just something I. And there is no new normal in Bitcoin. There is no new normal. in Bitcoin, Bitcoin has always been what it's always been. 21 million of them on the way, baby. And uh, it's mathematics. No emotion, no social justice. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, good. I, I like that. A world where rationality no longer holds water. That's what the, uh, that's, that's the 80% of the world. We're up here in the, in the overlay, baby. And another something, speaking of Twitter, there is a feed called Econ. Ecoin metrics. Now I could have made this the title of my uh, the title of the show. What Ecoin Ecoin metrics tweeted out? Okay, they they made a large uh, forty one thousand uh, dollar prediction for the end of the year. Okay, I could have put in my you know I could have put a, a picture of some girl in a bikini saying Bitcoin is going to hit forty one thousand dollars a year, but I don't appeal to the eighty percenters. Okay, I don't do that, but I I. Did not know about the Ecoin metrics uh, before this. And the dude's got an interesting feed. So if you like bullish bullish takes, fancy charts, I mean, he gives a reason. He gives some logic behind why he thinks it's going to be 
41 freaking thousand dollars on December 31st. I'm not saying that, <laughs> but uh, you, you can you can follow him. I link to him below. Now, yesterday I, I spoke about you know someone being in mode. By the way, are there any other questions out there? I don't. Oh, I know. Just what's for dinner? Jeffrey Gotts made a uh, he put an avocado out there. Oh, for DeFi to succeed, we need CFI to accept it. It's a good point. <laughs> It's it's a new – look at DeFi as an evolution of CFI, okay? It, it, because, I mean, that's what we have now is centralized finance. And DeFi really is just a more technologically advanced centralized finance. So we're going to have to have those people in the centralized finance world say, this is cooler than what we're doing or this helps us more. So I think that is a, a good observation there. For DeFi to succeed, we need a CFI to accept it. Are a lot of not all of CFI, but a large entities within the CFI uh, space to uh, say we're, we're modernizing and we're, we're getting into this new game. And I think I think a, a lot of people. I mean, from everything that I've shared today, uh, and from the what, what the Ethereum price has done over the last few months. We're just getting started with mainstream normie CFI interest into uh, into DeFi. And again, my positive take is that they're going to come up with some interesting things and also that it will lead people into Bitcoin. It's going to lead people into Bitcoin. Now, what else do we have? Oh, the, the last thing. The Bitcoin BTC Chris, K-R-I-S. I spoke about uh, him being in motion and writing this article, why Bitcoin, why now? But I could not quote it yesterday because I lost the quote. Here's the quote I wanted to share. It's about gold, and I think it's right on, right on target here. While old timers will rattle on about a return to a gold standard, most do not know that gold supplies have not been audited in half a century nor do they know how much sovereign gold has been corrupted by inserting atomically similar tungsten rods into the center of gold bars. Nor do they talk about how a return to the gold standard would certainly mean trusting a custodian to hold the gold. The modern internet economy is not designed for transacting with gold coins. Gold is poorly suited for buying something these days. The thought of mailing a gold coin across the country or across international borders is asinine in, in our modern age. And everything that he, all the negatives that he just pointed out about gold, uh, they, they can't happen. There's no inserting tungsten into Bitcoin, okay? There's no lack of uh, accountability. You know how, mu how much Bitcoin there is every freaking second of the day. There's, there's no question if, if oh, maybe this Bitcoin's fake. No, that, that that's that's not that's not at all. That's not the, that that's how we've uh, evolved from gold 1.0 to gold 2.0, which is which is Bitcoin. But uh, and you can obviously we already know it's easy to send Bitcoin. You don't have to mail it in the mail, <laughs> uh, and it's it's pretty easy for uh, to buy something with Bitcoin these days. All right, so that that that's a great observation there. Hey, gold gold still ha holds value. All right. It's clear gold still ha has value. It has positive aspects to it. But this is just, we're just in a whole new realm here. Uh, okay. We're in the five digit Bitcoin realm, but we're just in a new, a new way of thinking. You know, Peter, Peter Schiff's kid is growing and he's not growing up with gold. He's growing up with, uh, he's, and, and kids his age are growing up. They want to play with digital stuff. They don't need to phys have it in their hands. And more and more people are that way. Okay. That is it. Long-term thinking says crypto native. I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> and Todd says, Todd wants to give me credit for saying something positive about decred last week. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine, dude. I said the word decred again, the decred people always like when I, when I say the, uh, the word uh, decred, I remember when everyone was talking about governance, that was the big, uh, that was a big buzzword in 2017. So Decred was a was a big flavor of the month uh, back in 2017. Thanks for the consistent content, says DJ. 
and thank you guys for the comments, by the way, I, I, Todd and, and, and everyone that said, said funny stuff. It's good. Super inspiring uh, crypto dividend been uh, been subscribed for a couple of years now. Thanks. Well, thank you, DJ Seafair. And I will leave it. Uh, thanks for the consistent content. It, dude, I'm, it's conviction. Everyone, you can develop your own system. Be, be consistent. Have conviction. People really do appreciate it. People, we are living in such a, a society now where flakes are so common. Dude, you just got to have, you just got to be conscientious, conscientious and not be a flake. And dude, you're on the path to success. Pound out like button. I'm Adam Meister, Bitcoin Meister, Disrupt Meister. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back real soon. 9.15 in the morning. Ty Zen. Oh yeah. You can't. I can have Ty Zen on my show. <laughs> and no, I, I, the, the Bitcoin Inquisition has no power over me. I am a unique beast. So are you. See you guys tomorrow at 9.15 in the morning, Baltimore time. Thanks a lot. I'll say hi in the chat. Bye-bye.